So how do you create a B tree index or any other tree structured index if you already have a large data set? So there are basically two options. Of course, you could use the trivial option. That is option one, let's call it. You initialize an empty tree. Initialize empty tree. You can always do that, of course. And then you just insert the tuples one by one. Yeah? You do a tuple-wise insert. That's one way of doing that. But that's not the best way that you can do. There's a better way, and that's called bulk loading. So there are many different algorithms on bulk loading. I will show you just one, which is, however, very efficient. So what is the situation? This is a situation we have our data and there is no index and the data is typically unsorted. And now we want to create an index using the first attribute as a key. So the first attribute here with this number should be the key in the index. So what can we do about that? Well, the first thing we do is we sort the data according to the attribute. So we want to use this attribute as a key, so we sort the data first. That's what I did here. So now you see, if you go back here, it's unsorted. Now the data is all sorted with respect to this first attribute. Now I have all the data sorted in ascending order across the different data pages. And you can use whatever sorting method for that. If it fits the main memory, you can use the main memory sorting method. If it doesn't fit in the main memory, use external sorting. We will get back to how external sorting works. For the moment, it doesn't matter. There's any sorting method you want, you use it, you sort the data pages. And then you start creating the actual tree index. How does that work? Well, you start from left to right. You basically traverse the data pages from left to right, and then you create the tree bottom up from left to right. So what I'm showing in the following is basically this situation. We start with that, that's our level of data pages, so to say, and then we create the index from left to right bottom up. That is the order I will explain in the following. So here are the leaf pages of the tree and, and these of course are node pages. That is what I'm explaining in the following. So let's do that. Let's start from left to right. The first thing we do is we create a leaf. So that's what I did here. I create an index leaf. In this example I'm creating a dense index. This also works for sparse indexes. But this is a dense index. So for every tuple I find on the data page I create an entry here in that leaf page. And I continue doing that. So here's another leaf page. That leaf page has entries to two different data pages. So it really depends on how much room is here available for the different entries. I connect those leaves. But then, of course, when I'm in this situation, I should also create an index node, a node as we called it. So that's what I do here. So here I create the node. I, I insert pointers to the two different leaves. And then I already have a B tree. This is already a little B tree with respect to all data up to this tuple here. All of that data is already indexed by the B tree. And then I continue indexing. So basically I keep adding leaves here. I go from left to right. And whenever necessary, I add additional nodes, additional index nodes on top to connect them to a tree. So here I add another leaf and of course the leaf must be pointed to by some node. So we have to add another arrow here. So we add the arrow and this is already the final situation as we only have four data pages. This is already the complete tree for this data set. Yeah, we have four data pages and that, that is the entire tree. So bottom line, you have your data pages. What you do is you sort them, it can be ascending or descending order, doesn't matter. Once you have those data pages, you scan through them from left to right or right to left, doesn't matter. Let's do this from left to right. So you scan it from left to right, then you create a leaf, you create another leaf, then if you have two leaves, you also have to create a node. This is a node level, this is a leaf level. Here you have to insert the appropriate arrows. Of course, you have the double linked list here on that level. And you keep on creating leaves. And then, okay, maybe they're inserted here, depending on the node size here. If this is a node like here, that can accommodate three arrows, that's fine and so forth. So eventually 
you have more of this, you create, so here you create two leaves, you create another node, and then you have two roots all of a sudden. Of course, in this situation, you have to create another root, a new root, and then you're in a situation like that. That is a process that's being used for bike loading. From left to right, that is basically what's going on. You go from left to right, from bottom to top. That is how you process the data and that is how you create the tree. So here is another example with two node levels. Again, you go from left to right to create this clustered index in this example. And then basically you start with these two leaves, create the node, you add another leaf, then you continue, create another leaf, another leaf, and then create the node that has to be connected here and so forth. So basically that is a process. So one note about that, if we go back to this here, you see that all leaves and nodes are fully occupied. So this is something you can tune in bike loading. So you don't have to do it like that. If you remember, this is a tree with K star. K star equals two and K is one here. So K is one. And I'm entirely filling up the leaves here and I'm entirely filling up the nodes. So you don't have to do it like that. Why wouldn't you do it like that? Because now if you have any inserts in the tree, then the first insert already will trigger a split operation, which costs something. So it might be a better decision to leave some space for newly inserted tuples. So for example, you could say the leaves you create are only filled up up to 75%. That would be one decision. So whenever you have a leaf here, and we have um, four slots here, let's draw it again, you have a leaf. You could do it like, okay, 11, 15, 34, and you leave this empty here. You don't insert anything here, but you already start the next leaf here. And then in that leaf, you insert 56, what is the next, 67, 72, and then you start the next leaf and so forth. Of course, if you do it like that, you get more leaves and the tree is likely to have more levels. On the other hand, once you insert anything, so assume you're in this situation and you want to insert a key 42. So if you did it like that, you can directly put it here. So it's easy. That would be very nice. If you did it like that and you insert 42, you end up at this leaf and then you have to split it, which is a little more costly. So it's a trade-off. The decision how much space you leave available for newly inserted entries depends on how many inserts you expect. So that's a tuning parameter. And how to tune that parameter, how to set that parameter highly depends on the workloads, the number of inserts you expect. So bottom line, if you have a big data set and you want to create an index, you don't have an index yet on a specific attribute, don't do it like this. That is more expensive. I mean, if it's a small data set like here, it won't make a big difference. But for bigger data sets, it makes a difference. And then you shouldn't do this. You rather bulk load the data. Well, actually, to be fair, there's another method for bulk loading if you haven't implemented this one. And that is, let's call it, let's call this 2A and let's introduce another method 2B. So this is a method that's nice, uh, that improves over me method one and can be used if you haven't implemented bike loading. So if bike loading is not available, so in this method, it's like in between tuplewise insert and bike loading. So what you do is you also sort the data first. So let's, how do we call this method? Let's call it sorted tuplewise insert. So which means the first thing you do is you sort the data pages, sort data pages. So basically what we did on the next slide here, that's what we did here. So we sort the data according to the key we want to use for that specific index. So we do that, but then we don't do this method. I explained here the standard bulk loading from left to right, bottom up, we do something different. And that is we do method one method one. Yeah, so basically here's the same as here. However, the advantage is that with this method, the, uh, the, the errors won't go crisscross and we have way less cache misses. We have way less random IO as the data is already sorted with respect to the 
key we use in the index. This is a way more effective method. So we still have splits in that tree and in the B tree we create like that. The layout on disk on main memory may not be as good, but this is a pretty neat method for situations where you don't have a bulk loading method available, where the bulk loading is not implemented. You just sort it first and then you call method one, tuplevice insert, and then you end up with a very nice tree. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.